Welcome to This Week Health. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, where we are dedicated to transforming healthcare one connection at a time. Today, we have an interview in action from the 2024 conferences, the spring conferences, Vive in LA, HIMSS in Orlando. Special thanks to our sponsors, Quantum Health, Gordian, Dr. First, CDW, Gozio Health, Artisite, and Zscaler. You can check them out on our website, thisweekhealth.com. Now, on to our interview. All right, here we are from HIMSS 2024 in beautiful Orlando. We're joined by Andy Chu with Providence, Chief Product Officer, and welcome, by the way. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Chief Product Officer is an interesting title and not common in healthcare. No, not at all. So give me an idea of what it is and what you're trying to do. Yeah, so within Providence, I work for the Chief Digital and Strategy Officer, Sarah Viazi at Providence. And specifically, my mission is to figure it out make problems and try to incubate from within Providence. So build a product to solve a problem. A problem, and if we can scale the cross Providence, then we look at commercial opportunities, and then we define there's a commercial opportunity that we bring on a management team, we spin out, raise capital. Interesting, so I'm gonna start back at the problem here. Yeah. So I'd imagine there's a few problems so how do you go through the problem and say, all right, this one looks, because there's probably, when you, even after you've called them all, you'd like, all right, these 15 probably look real, like we could do something here. How do you determine which one you're going to attack? Yeah, it's more of an art and a science, as you can imagine. There's so many problems within healthcare, right? Where do you even start? So I think the way we go through the process of really living in the problem, we go talk to the operations team, we talk to clinicians, we talk to our IT department, we talk to venture capitalists, we talk to the ecosystem at large and see what actually is going on. And we also know operational metrics. What needles are we trying to move now and in the near future? And I would say, is it more of a triangulation exercise? And then from talking with all these folks, we'll generate a set of pieces. And then based on those theses, we'll do additional research. That range from looking at what companies are out there. What are they doing? What are the big EMR vendors? Great, is, is that beginning to get into this in the next three years? Because if they are, let's go in a different path. Even if they say they do, and most often time they do, I'll say that, hey, we're gonna get into this space, doesn't mean they're gonna do it well, right? Doesn't mean that in a very complex environment like ours, we have many different applications, how do they actually work with each other? So I think those are all the questions that we have to go ask. And then the other question we also try to answer is, why should we go build it? Vis-a-vis -vis some company can be funded by one of the big VCs, what makes us unique? So those are all the questions we have to go through and then figure it out. Hey, if this is a specific unique area that because we have specific insights related to the workflow or access, to data or just plainly operations, right? right? And then from there, we're gonna essentially funneling down to a set of thesis. Even then, for example, we've been going through an exercise over the last, I would say nine months or so, we have about 10 thesis, what we want to focus on. And my team is fairly small, so we're gonna probably gonna go explore one or two of these opportunities and then we're gonna go deep dive in it. And typically what we do is we start building a prototype. We work with our operations team to go build a prototype. We know exactly what metrics we're trying to move. And then from there, hopefully, before we write one line of code, we want to make sure that the problem that we're building is a big problem. We try to stay away from building core solution. We try to go after a bigger swing and really try to build a platform. And then we also get external validation before we write one line of code. So you don't try to be part of the problem and have another point solution. You want to have something that can grow and expand. And That's right. So what does it mean yeah. to build a platform? Yeah, so if you look at what we are in the process of spinning out, Prior Health, we announced it back in October. That problem we're trying to find is dealing with patient identity and patient engagement. As most health system, we included our digital front door essentially is my chart. But one of the things we realized a few years ago is that we as a health system, we have a lot of assets from classes to programs, different type of digital services. And, and they're different from market to market. Exactly. And payers have a number of services offering. Employer may have other offering for their employees. Problem is how do you bring all these things together? Very easily show to a patient here are all the services you can consume. And then having a patient don't have to log in, 
50 times to different applications. So that's the problem that we try to solve for. But as we know, you have MyChar ID, and it's difficult to integrate all these things with MyChar. So that was the first problem that we tried to solve for, is how do we build a system that can interoperate with MyChart, right? So we're treating MyChart as one of the many applications that we can single sign on into. And then we can also access the electronic medical record so we know the issues we have for those patients. And then based on those conditions, we can start recommending next best action for those patients. And those data can come from multiple places. So that's one of the main component in the platform. And then the second component is when we start looking at this problem, it's very expensive to build, build a very custom application on top of MyChart. MyChart has very many good features. So we, we kind of marry both worlds. So as an example, within the Providence app, we pulled out specific shortcuts from my chart, but we can also now add on additional components. And as a patient, you have full access to my chart. So that's the second component. The third component is the broader ecosystem I talked about. So as an example, the state of Alaska is offering essentially free services, OMADA, which is a diabetes management program for their residents. So we're fairly large in Alaska. So we work with OMADA to promote their service within the Providence application, specifically for the hypertension and diabetes patients. And then we're also working with them right now to do single sign-on. Because one of the big issues for a lot of digital services companies is awareness and sign-up, and then also sharing data. So that's the whole idea. We can start building an ecosystem of all these different type of services, could be transportation, could be other things that is really good for the patient to be aware of. And then the fourth piece is analytics, because we can track where people are using, how they're using the services, and then we can share the data with the operations team. So that is an example of a platform. We're not solving one problem. Right. And then we actually bring in and tie them all together. In the ever-evolving world of health IT, staying updated isn't just an option, it's essential. Welcome to This Week Health, your daily dose of news, podcasts, and expert commentary designed specifically for healthcare professionals like yourself. Discover the future of health IT news with This Week Health. Our new news aggregation process brings you the most relevant hand-picked stories from the world of health IT, curated by experts, summarized for clarity, and delivered directly to you. No more sifting through irrelevant news, just pure focused content to keep you informed and ahead. Don't be left behind. Start your day with insight at the intersection of technology and healthcare. This Week Health, where information inspires innovation. There have been some organizations that have gone all the way through the process, a handful of them. Talk a little bit about what those are. So the other one was three years ago, DexCare, and specifically that problem that we're trying to solve for is access optimization. Balancing sort of supply and demand between the provider's schedule online and what patients are looking for is still a very it's a hard challenge. That was a problem that we're trying to solve for is a pulling in number of different slots can come from different applications and then optimizing the access capability and what patient wants. So that was the whole premise behind DexCare. And it's really spanning beyond just PCP. Uh, of course, we also know the challenge. Specialty docs may not want to put their stuff online, right? So there's a whole different conversation on its own. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve for. And DexCare, we spun it out, like I mentioned, about 10 years ago. They've raised a lot of money. And then before that, with Zelf, it's really managing these third-party applications, digital prescription. So that has done really well over the last few years. And the last company is Wildflower, so women's health. So they have content and programs and services. One of the gotchas with development, and it's interesting because one of the gotchas I've found with development is people don't recognize the long term, like if you develop a product, the long tail of that, like releases, security, keeping it updated. But what you guys end up doing is spinning it out, giving it its own team to sort of take it. So it's not a Providence team that's taking it into the future. It's a Zelt team or it's a Dex care team that takes it in the future. Are there other challenges or gotchas as health systems try to get into the product development side? You have unique insight being as a CIO at yeah. St. Joseph. So that's exactly right. So one of the main reasons why we spin out is building is one thing. Maintaining, continuous sustaining is a very expensive process. And growing a business. Yes. So when we build a product, we look through the lens if this is something that is really a venture capitalist, the capital market is willing to fund this, even from a capital structure standpoint. 
we purposely over time to essentially reduce our ownership in those companies. Those are all the things that other, some of the health system are not aware of. So I think a big part of it is just running a company, continue to be competitive in the market, and then continue to build it, maintain it, right? And sell it. The way we also think about this is it's not so much a gotcha, but then we also, the way we think about it is if we can scale with Providence, we think is also a bigger problem for other health system. Right. We want to have other health system also leverage that benefit that we have discovered. And it's very expensive to build software. And that's why we use the capital market to fund those products that we develop. One of the things I admire about Providence is you guys have figured out how to tap into resources overseas. There's Providence, India, and, and whatnot. Yep. You do the development. Is it your small team, or do you tap into that broader pool? It depends. In the case of Praia, we have teams in India as well to help some of our development. I also have teams doing analytics, some of the data science effort as well. So we utilize some of those resources. We don't utilize all the resources in India. So it's a combination of CSI as well as India. Is there a design benefit to keeping your team small? We have to be nimble, and a big part of it is the benefits, but because we can move fast, right? Yeah. Decision making is there are no multiple layers of uh, decision making. We we well, partner you, closely. You, you also can't take on three or four at a time. No. You no. essentially say, okay, this is the problem we're going to solve, and you stay in that lane until you either prove it out or you we full shop or close it up. Yeah. Their own product, for example, when we were developing Praia, initially when we started thinking about personalization, we thought, hey, we can just start with content. But as most health system content is it's not as robust as we would like, other than a, maybe a couple health system in the country, right? Hey, we can't really start personalizing with content and what we can learn with it. So we pivot it and do something else, but explore a whole new dimension. So I think that's another reason, especially when we start a project, it's literally like three people, right? We have a developer, we have a half designer, and sort of pseudo product person. I play some role. Like everyone on my team, doesn't matter what title is, we go pretty deep. Fantastic. Andy, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this interview in action episode. If you found value in this, share it with a peer. It's a great chance to discuss and in some cases, start a mentoring relationship. One way you can support the show is to subscribe and leave us a rating. If you could do that, that would be great. And we want to give a big thanks to our partners who make this possible. Quantum Health, Gordian, Dr. First, CDW, Gozio Health, Artisite, and Zscaler. You can learn more about them by visiting thisweekhealth.com partners. Thanks for listening. That's all for now. <laughs>